I was 15 years old when this incident happened. Uh, there was two guys inside of the YMCA that began to argue and fight. They um, told them to take the argument outside. There was a man behind the counter and said, get outside. We don't want that in here. They went outside. They locked the doors behind them, started shooting at one another. Bullets started flying through the air. Um, two bullets came through the window of the YMCA. One bullet hit a wall and the other bullet struck me in my head. Uh, the bullet went in on this side of my head and the bullet traveled to the round the back. But they were gang members and they were shooting. And the interesting part about that is um, my father started a year ago, uh, 1992, not this year, but in 1992, the year before I was shot, started a program called Stop the Madness because there were uh, many deaths that were happening with our young people uh, as far as gang related issues were concerned. And they were dying every day. Uh, he was concerned because no one was saying anything. Every day someone was dying, no one said anything. Uh, the schools didn't say anything. The city didn't say much. But more than anything, the church didn't say anything. So he got tired of and started Stop the Madness to stop the gang violence and the madness in the lives of a lot of individuals in that city. There was a lot of news uh, coverage, a lot of news people that came to the, the hospital uh, to talk to him, to get his thoughts on him, because he was the advocate in the city to try to stop the violence. So everyone wanted to know, what do you think about it now, since it was your son that got shot? He sat there uh, and he said in the news conference, he said, um, I feel like Abraham when God wanted to see if he would sacrifice his son Isaac to see if he loved him. And he said, I want God to know and I want the city to know that if God wants to use our son as an example to reach others, then we're willing. When he said that, that went through every television, sh uh, uh, television in the city whoever was watching that channel. And when people saw his faith, the church grew, Stop the Madness grew. Um, people found out about the incident nationwide, magazines, uh, um, sh uh, television shows, and the bullets was going off. I, rem I remember seeing, if you see the movie, The Matrix, everything started moving in slow motion, everything. And I thought maybe I was just in shock because I'd never been in that environment where guns were shot, fired. Um, but everybody started moving around like the matrix. Um, there was a big loud ring in my right ear. It was loud. Uh, it was so loud as a ring and my head began to vibrate uh, very, very badly. Um, it's like a metal bat. If you got a metal bat and you hit it against the wall, that's how my bat, my head felt. It felt like that bat. It really started vibrating. Uh, my body got extremely hot. But there was a man that grabbed me. And uh, I remember I had an uncle that died, passed away a few years earlier. And I remember him holding me and I said, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to see my uncle. I'm going to see my uncle. And he said, no, you're not. Just keep praying. Keep praying. And I prayed and prayed and prayed. And uh, I remember seeing a white light a white light and uh, I remember hearing these stories and you say yeah everyone says that but I actually experienced that white light and in that white light there was a taller gentleman and a, a, a shorter gentleman the taller gentleman had his arms around the shorter gentleman and they was walking towards the light and I believe that that was uh, uh, Jesus with his arms around my uncle saying he's okay and you're gonna be okay when I died they they worked on me um, people prayed for me in the community um, I woke up in the hospital completely blind. The doctor said that I would never see again. They said if I lived, I would live as a vegetable, brain dead for the rest of my life. Um, again, uh, the community came and they prayed for me. Uh, I mean, different people of different races, uh, different sides of the fence, different uh, denominations. Everyone came together and they prayed for me. And within three weeks, I walked up, uh, woke up out of the hospital with a 20-20 vision. Uh, and the bullet still lies between my brain and my skull. Maybe earlier this year, uh, I went to the doctor. I said, let me, let me go see, you know, um, what everything looks like. I want to see if the bullet had moved or what happened. He looked at me and he said, I really don't understand how you still have your motor skills. Because looking at your CAT scan, it's saying that you should. But looking at you, it's saying that you, you, it shows that you have those motor skills. And I don't understand it. And I said, uh, I do. <laughs> I know exactly what it was and who it is. It's Jesus. So I'm a living witness that God is a healer and I can walk around with the bullet still in my head. So uh, that's, that's my story. How great the love of Jesus Christ. Look
cross of Calvary, the blood was shed that 